On the eve of Chinese New Year, Asia is grappling with a growing health crisis. China has stepped up quarantine efforts to contain the Wuhan coronavirus. Travel restrictions have been imposed on more than a dozen cities on the mainland, affecting around 40 million people. The death toll has climbed to 26, with new cases reported in Singapore, Vietnam and Japan. The travel ban has already locked down 11 million people in Wuhan, which is ground zero for the virus. Railway stations are mostly shut, flights have been suspended and major roads closed. That's now been expanded to include at least 10 other cities in Hubei province. And that includes Jingzhou with a population of 6.4 million people. And in Huangshi, transport routes have also been shut down. A ferry terminal and bridge over the Yangtze River have been closed. Away from Hubei province, Beijing has closed the Forbidden City. It will also close some sections of the Great Wall, while Shanghai Disneyland will close tomorrow indefinitely. This at a time when the theme park is usually packed with tourists. Last year, it was sold out during Chinese New Year. China has now reported almost 900 cases of the virus, and all but two of China's 31 provinces and municipalities are now affected. The World Health Organization has stopped short of declaring the outbreak as an international emergency, saying it's still too early, but it has declared it an emergency in China itself. All this, as you might expect, has dampened the mood on the eve of Chinese New Year. An occasional pedestrian, the odd cyclist, scenes from what used to be busy streets in the city of 11 million people. Chinese health authorities locking down Wuhan, the heart of the coronavirus outbreak. Most shops are now shuttered. Fast food restaurants told by landlords to stop operating. Banks are also closed. Still open though, some pharmacies and convenience stores. In one supermarket, a sense of normalcy prevails, with ample stocks on shelves, allowing residents to shop for their daily necessities. On the streets, most people have put on masks, but there are some who don't see the point. Still, the fear is palpable. In hotels, the restaurants are empty at breakfast time. Guests are told to eat in their rooms and to wear masks even while indoors. Hospitals are packed. Long queues are the norm, with patients spilling out onto the corridors. This hospital says it's run out of rooms and it's no longer accepting patients whose only symptom is a fever. With no clear end to the lockdown in sight, residents may have to get used to this until the outbreak blows over. Afifa Arifin is standing by for us in Hong Kong. Afifa, there are reports that Wuhan doctors are finding new symptoms of the virus. What do we know? Well, yes, John, according to some local reports by the Chinese media, there are a few healthcare uh, officials in Wuhan who have found uh, several cases of infected patients who did not display the commonly recognized early symptoms, so things like fever um, and cough. They had cited a case of a 45-year-old man who only displayed symptoms of a diarrhea and had no fever or any respiratory problems. But after a few tests were being conducted, it was indeed found that he was infected with the virus. So health Healthcare officials in Wuhan are urging the public and doctors to look out for a wider range of possible early symptoms, and this includes a nausea, dizziness, conjunctivitis, and even muscle soreness. And so they are worried, of course, because of the larger possibilities of early symptoms, that it will be a challenge for medical professionals to really identify or diagnose if a person is indeed a suspected a case of infection of the virus. And they also are worried that members of the public will take a delay or a longer time to identify uh, any of these early symptoms. Afifa, how are Chinese authorities preparing for the possibility of a jump in the outbreak during the New Year, New Year travel period? 
Well, in this travel period, we already do know that the Chinese authorities have locked down the 12 cities near Wuhan, the epicenter of the outbreak, effectively preventing nearly 40 million people from traveling out of uh, their cities during the Chinese New Year festivities. Uh, we also do know that a lot of efforts are going on in Wuhan. Uh, there is a rush to build a 1,000 bed hospital by Monday. To uh, This is where the cases of suspected patients uh, will be uh, treated. We do know that there is a shortage of medical resources and facilities in the city. We're hearing a lot of reports of people turning up to hospitals reporting early symptoms, but they had to be turned away. So there are a lot of medical professionals joining in the front lines in Wuhan. This includes the Chinese military deploying about 40 of their medical doctors to help out in the intensive care units in the city. Uh, meanwhile, several major cities across China, including Shanghai and the capital Beijing, have already raised the highest alert level for public health emergency response uh, in a bid to really prevent the outbreak in the region. I feel for lots of measures are being taken across the region as we see this virus spread, but what sort of precautions are we seeing in Hong Kong? Well, we already do know that the authorities in Hong Kong have really stepped up some of their precautionary measures, tightening uh, monitoring at uh, several of the border checkpoints in terms of temperature screening. We also do know that yesterday they implemented uh, that it is mandatory for people traveling in from any of the cities in China on the high speed rail to fill out a health declaration form. They've also uh, informed doctors to look out for uh, any patients who display one type of symptom and to refer them to the hospital. Uh, previous guidelines only required doctors to look out for a combination of uh, factors. Uh, but by and large, the people um, in Hong Kong are taking a lot of responsibility in terms of their own personal hygiene. A lot of them are reminded of that SARS crisis that hit the city back in 2003, which claimed about 300 lives of, of the people in the city. So if you walk around, you see many people wearing a face mask as a form of a precautionary measure. Uh, this has, in fact, become an issue here in the city uh, because of the limited whole supplies. So prices of face masks have uh, skyrocketed uh, and in most pharmacies that I've been to, uh, a lot of the stock is also sold out. So in a bid uh, to uh, get around this issue, uh, we are hearing that district uh, councillors are using some of the district funds to uh, purchase uh, bulk orders of face masks so that they are able to distribute them for free to the elderly uh, and the lower income people uh, in their area. Afifa, thank you very much for that update. We've been speaking there to Afifa Arafin reporting for us from Hong Kong.